Hi everyone and welcome to your horoscope for the week of December 21st, 2020. This horoscope is brought to you by 1millionnights.com We have a really active sky and a very rare and important celestial event taking place right around Monday. So it opens the week but also it opens a totally new paradigm For all of us, humanity as a collective, we're speaking about the great conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter taking place in zero degrees in the sign of Aquarius. This happens Monday, which is also winter solstice. And worthy to mention is that this great conjunction is also visible in the sky, where it will look like a bigger and brighter Jupiter. And this in itself is also very rare, because last time it happened was 800 years ago. And I do believe that when a celestial event is visible and, you know, emphasized even physically, because its brightness, its size, and the show that it puts on, well, that also has a very powerful meaning, because It kind of symbolizes that this event is that much more important for all of us alive here today. So, for example, even those people who might have no knowledge of astrology, who might not be aware of what is going on, well, they look up to the sky and they can see that something is different. They can see that something is changing Or at least that something unusual, something special is happening up there. So basically that is a sign for all of us. Now naturally, without a shadow of a doubt, it is this meeting of Saturn and Jupiter which is the highlight of the week, which is basically the superstar of this astrological show. It opens up the gates to the new paradigm basically, by shifting, changing, rearranging, opening, upgrading, use whatever word you you like, our worldviews as a species, as a collective, which means that individually this also has to take place. And that new ability to perceive the world in a totally different way, and that new mental pattern, which basically allows us to consider elements, things, nuances, which influence our everyday reality, which basically we were not aware of before. It is this upgrade of our ability to perceive that basically changes absolutely everything. And of course, history also demonstrates that such a conjunction, the meeting of Saturn and Jupiter in this part of the sky, is strongly connected to a massive quantum leap where our way of thinking, our way of interpreting reality, and at the same time, using that practically in the shape and form of new technologies, science evolving very, very quickly, fast-paced, new theories revolutionizing everything. Now, this changes the world forever, so the last time... This happened, coincided with the Renaissance period, and that was a period of rebirth, as the name suggests, but also a massive quantum leap, because it was the theories born in that era, and some theories readapted, resurrected from the ancient times, integrated in that era, and also new technological advancements, if we can call it like that, the evolution of science, of arts, of spirituality, but also the beginning of separating spirituality from empirical knowledge changed our world forever and took us out of the dark ages. Of course, that didn't mean that it happened instantly, but of course, over the course of time, Step by step, this new world and this new paradigm brought on by the Renaissance movement did change a lot of things in our lives as a collective. And if we think about it, 
the period of time it took for this new uh, revolution, evolution of basically our way of thinking and being able to actively integrate our intelligence into every domain, every area of our lives. The changes it produced, while well, they were very quick, it didn't take us hundreds of years. Well, it did to get to this stage where we are now. But, you know, if you look at the specifics of that era, well, the changes were very, very quick. And basically they turned upside down the normality of a lot of people, especially a lot of relevant people, alive in that era. And also think about it this way. A lot of people who created groundbreaking pieces of work, regardless from which domain science, philosophy, anatomy, and of course the evolution of arts and the different artistic currents. Now the creators of those or the promoters of those might have been, you know, executed in earlier times. Some of the theories or, you know, creations, gestures, philosophies might have been interpreted as heresy or very, very profane, maybe just a hundred years before the Renaissance period. So it was very, very important for a lot of reasons. So if that was the main theme playing out at that time, we can imagine that we in the modern times are also going to go through, but are also going through in this very second, through a certain kind of rebirth and evolution. But of course that evolution, due to the airy nature of Aquarius, well, it takes the shape and form of a revolution, so it's instant, spontaneous, very, very quick paced. And since we have all this technology, scientific knowledge, and naturally the internet, humanity's collective consciousness, basically, which allows all of us to be connected, all of us to exist virtually in a common space, that which allows us to basically live symbolism, symbols like combinations of zeros and ones, in a much more direct way outside our fantasy and our imagination, so that which should have only be able to exist in our minds can all of a sudden exist outside, but it's still not real because it still doesn't take a very physical manifestation. It is basically our perceptions that make it real. So again, the sign of Aquarius is closely linked to interhuman connections, to humanitarianism, to sharing and being able to live in a certain kind of symbiosis. And without a shadow of a doubt, the internet in this modern age and this modern era is a big, big key player in all of this. But this great conjunction is also very important for the not-so-distant future, because all of these things I have been speaking about, well, they can basically enter reality over the course of the next 20 years, and then in 60 years' time, we also have another great conjunction in Aquarius, so it's not really a big deal. But for the shorter-term future, well, it's very, very important because it shifts the energy and the emphasis from Capricorn onto Aquarius, because both Saturn and Jupiter, two very, very influential planets, are simultaneously moving in and activating this part of the sky. Yes, Pluto, another very important power player, will remain in Capricorn for 2024, and then it will start to move into Aquarius and then back to Capricorn once again. But Pluto alone is a very different energy than when it had Jupiter and Saturn, two very important and influential power players in the same sign with him. It basically, Jupiter expands everything, so it gave a 
very strong sense of urgency to all of the changes and transformation and especially the truth being revealed while Saturn you know Saturn is the ruling planet of Capricorn it basically made everything real it made everything manifest here in an earthly plane well think about it this way the social restrictions can you possibly separate people and stop them from seeing each other in any other way well even if the answer is yes the way the universe planned out this separation it was basically genius and this separation became that much more evident once saturn briefly dipped into the sign of aquarius in march this march 2020 where it also met mars so basically that highlighted the main issues that we have to solve once it enters this part of the sky for good permanently so why is this that important well first of all saturn in capricorn is all about centralized power it is about abiding the rules following the guidelines it is cooperating and respecting authority respecting the power other people have over us being true and loyal to the hierarchical chain and not to mention it also makes work be all about responsibility spirit of sacrifice spirit of duty and we could have seen this playing out on the world stage on numerous occasions in numerous symbolic ways and of course since pluto wasn't there and still isn't there well it also highlighted all the problems that exist with incentralized power and our way of organizing our lives society and everything so it highlighted the corruption it highlighted the incompetence it highlighted the abuse of certain rules and regulations and it brought so very many politicians and you know important leaders heads of big organizations in front of justice so a trial basically of course with jupiter in the sign of capricorn the economic part of the crisis the social unrest the mistrust that people have in centralized power and in in media and in everything that rules over our lives but also greatly emphasized upon because Jupiter did meet Pluto and they squared Mars so that was moment of confrontation not just confrontation with the truth but also a cry out for equality for independence for people's sovereign rights to be taken into consideration and all of this is definitely going to continue as saturn and jupiter enter aquarius because aquarius is the sign of freedom individuality cooperation coexisting with one another so basically people wanting their sovereign rights their decisions their uniqueness being respected is going to be a major theme that's going to continue the next 20 years of course the proportion and the way that this very important symbol plays out in the world is going to evolve as well and hopefully it is not going to be as violent as concentrated as radical as it was in 2020 with all the protests and all of this even though these protests and people expressing their opinions their sovereign desires is going to also be a major theme because the very first celestial conversations that saturn and jupiter are going to be holding in the sign of aquarius apart from their conjunction of course is going to be a square a conversation of tension with the modern ruling planet of this sign as an aquarius uranus so that means that tradition values traditional rules and regulations and customs and all of these are going to be battling 
the new, the revolutionary, the visionary. But this battle can be purely ideological and it doesn't have to necessarily mean like physical conflict. Of course, this also goes hand in hand with a massive economic, financial value system revolution and change where maybe cryptocurrency gains a lot of ground and influence. But even if it's not specifically cryptocurrency, the ways, you know, society uses money, values, transactions in the present moment is definitely going to undergo an upgrade and potentially a very quick pace upgrade. And then not to mention there is that part where technology is going to evolve in an even quicker manner than it has done so until the present moment. And in these last couple of years, while it everything went with the speed of light, so something, you know, entering our reality even quicker than this is definitely shocking and surprising and it gives us that less time to adapt ourselves to all of this. So certain, you know, areas of technology, certain innovations, certain upgrades are definitely going to be contested by people because a part of it maybe is going to seem as if it's way too much that we are interfering in nature's ways, etc. But, you know, the ultimate lesson here is technology is a big blessing because it is our intellectual superiority as a species manifested. It is a blessing if it's in good hands, if we know how to use it. And Uranus in the sign of Taurus transiting it until 2026 teaches us how to be responsible with our technology, with what we do to the earth, because the sign of Taurus represents mother nature and the physical earth while uranus is the technology so the, those two have to be in harmony with each other even though they're totally different energies with many in many cases are alien to one another and yet still we have to find a way where they can coexist in peace without influencing each other in a very dramatic and negative way so this will be another big theme of this new paradigm. And this can be one of the major themes of 2021, finding ways to implement new technologies which are much more friendlier with nature, with life, with our environment. And naturally, this whole lockdown was such a massive eye-opener because once we stopped our everyday activities and routines, very quickly, in a week or so, Mother Nature already showed signs of regeneration. And those signs weren't just small symbolic things. They were like really, really evident. So that moment already started conjuring up one of the great themes that is going to be an active part of our lives in the next 20 years. Now, another theme is, as I said earlier, freedom and equality. Now, the ruling planet of Aquarius is linked to revolution because the moment in history when Uranus was discovered, so we became aware of it, not just as a physical planet, but also with symbolism, coincided with, for example, the French Revolution. So basically, people will have the tendency to take equality, to take freedom, liberties, those values which uh, basically protect the individual, but also small communities, the sanctity of humanitarianism and interhuman connections, they will take it that much more seriously and do everything in their power to protect it, to make sure that that is one of the sovereign principles which governs everything about the human dimension, the human existence. So this already symbolizes that the way centralized power works and, you know, functions, how it rules us, how it governs us, will ultimately have to change. And the 
conversation of tension between uh, Saturn and Uranus in 2021 is going to be one of those karmic energies which brings into our awareness the necessity to change, the way we can change. It can give us a lot of new ideas, a lot of solutions, a lot of new options, a lot of new ways how we can restructure and rebuild everything. But naturally, there is going to be a lot of resistance from the way centralized power is operating in the present moment. So people might not want to abandon their positions of power. They might not believe in a very different way how to solve leadership and representation, you know, decentralization, so to speak. But all they can actually do is just slow this a little bit down. Because one way or another, this change is inevitable. And since Uranus is in the sign of Taurus, it is all about resources, money, finances, and economy as well. And if we combine this with equality, well, that means that you have the right to have a minimalistic income just because you're breathing, just because you were born as a human being. And this will be a big, big theme. Even though it will have, as I said, opposition resistance, it is something that is going to exist in our lives inevitably over the next couple of years. It will be no longer accepted for one single person, one individual to have so much excess in their lives and another person to have almost nothing or their very earthly existence to be threatened by not having, regardless of the circumstances. But, you know, enough about this great conjunction. There are more celestial conversations which do take place next week. So if you'd like to know more about this great conjunction and its influences for the longer term future, just check out our special video, which you can find on our site or on our YouTube channel. But before I move on, another thing which comes immediately after this great conjunction, well, the energy shift is going to be experienced straight away, mostly because before this movement took place, so Saturn moved out of his home sign of Capricorn around Thursday and Jupiter followed on Sunday. Well, they were in an erratic degree of Capricorn, which means 29 degrees, a very karmic degree where the symbolism of the planet is greatly amplified and usually the shadow expression is dominant. So this cocktail, this meeting of Saturn and Jupiter in 29 degrees of Capricorn might have greatly amplified our restrictions, our obstacles, all those areas of life where we are blocked, where we don't have any options, where basically there's no light at the end of the tunnel. So all throughout this week, we might not have struggled more, but we might have been that much more aware of our struggles, of our limitations. So it did make our situations just a little bit harder, harder to tolerate, harder to be hopeful, harder to stay positive. And it is this emphasis on the hardship that is going to shift and change because both of these planets have totally different expressions in the sign of Aquarius. Now, Aquarius is all about the future. It is all about our hopes, our dreams, our biggest ideals, our intellectual superiority, all those great ideas that our minds can give birth to. So this is a, the total opposite of that energy. It is hopeful. It is dreamy. It is idealistic. It is mind over matter, if you can think about the solution, if uh, the possibility, the chance of a solution or an opportunity to enter your life, if it exists in your mind, then you have all the reasons to be hopeful for, because, you know, mind over matter. And Saturn in the sign of Aquarius is all about solidarity, 
about mutual help, about the preservation of equality, and Saturn, regardless in which sign it is, it is still a symbol of authority, so it can be, for example, the state helping you, the laws and rules changing in the citizens' favor. It can be like non-profit organizations or communities coming together to help one another. So this changes the energy in a very significant way. So those situations where just a couple of days ago were hopeless, they seemed very difficult, the blockages were everywhere, all of that can change very, very quickly. As soon as our perceptions and our feelings about it change, well, you will see that physical reality will also change very, very quickly, especially that Saturn is the manifester and Jupiter is the faith. It is the principle, the idea, the divinely inspired idea, the divine architecture that we manifest through our earthly lives, as in Saturn. So this energy will bring a lot of solutions very, very quickly to a lot of people, because once Saturn was in Capricorn, you know, the problem was highlighted so you can will, you can dream, you can work karmically or in a very normal human way towards the solution and you had to desire it, you had to learn the lessons, you had to embody everything and now when it changes, when it moves signs, all of that can manifest very, very quickly. And of course... Think back to March this year, when Saturn did go briefly into the sign of Aquarius. What new solutions appeared in your life in that time? What changed? What shifted in a positive sense? Well, all those things which happened to you back then can come and return back into your reality in a greatly amplified way. Even if those were just gestures, if they were just symbols, if they were just ideas, thoughts, possibilities, advices, support from other people, even if that support was moral. Now all of that can turn into something really, really big right now. Or if we look at it karmically, well, the same pattern has to be enacted in a very influential manner this time. So it can really, really be good news for a lot of people. And another element which is totally different as i said earlier aquarius is our interhuman connections and of course it is our collective consciousness our collective memory our collective data bank so to speak manifested of course in this day and age we know that it is the internet so this means that our ability to connect to get information to meet other people with similarities, with the same principles, ideas, way of thinking, is going to be greatly emphasized, which means new friends, new interhuman connections, uh, accomplished or achieved with very, very great speed, almost like in an instant, is also going to be a big theme up until now, Capricorn limited that quite a lot, regardless if the internet became that much more influential during the lockdowns and the social distancing, but it was maybe our prejudice, it was our principles, it was our rigidness, our dignity, basically, which we try to protect our identity, which stopped these connections from forming instantaneously. But since now all of us are stepping into a new world view, that changes for everyone. I can easily say almost every human being on the planet, one way or another, their perceptions, their ability to process reality and everyday lives changes, upgrades, so everything changes. So that means that new connections can be formed Also, because we as a consciousness, we, our identities basically, also changed inside of us. So new things, new people, new ideas can resonate with us. And also, 
at the time of this great conjunction, Venus holds a minor astrological conversation called and in conjunction with Uranus. So this is the energy of delight, surprises, and sometimes shocks, where common values might connect us with people who we least expect it. And since Venus is in the sign of Sagittarius, this also translates to a lot of international connections, connections between individuals belonging to different cultures, spiritual connections, but at the same time also transactions and even financial transactions. So a lot of new connections can be created at this time. And if that wasn't enough, well, the Sun and Mercury also leave the sign of Sagittarius on the 21st and they enter into Capricorn. And this transit is really good for career, for profession, for studies, for achieving progress on your life goals, life path, whatever you want to accomplish. Those plans which you have been working on until this moment in time can be executed, can be brought into practicality. New professional connections can be made. Communication is going to be a major theme. For example, communication as in job offers, advertising, uh, career offers, or, you know, Capricorn, centralized power, uh, organizations of the state or the country which are responsible with protecting jobs or you know, the work legislation and all of that can go like clockwork. So that means new opportunities, new chances, new help, new sources of help for everyone. And of course, into the week, not long after the Sun and Mercury enter the sign of Capricorn, they are going to start holding a conversation of supreme harmony with Uranus from fellow Earth sign Taurus. So that is also a really, really good news because it can be, you know, success, breakthrough, um, financial evolution for the better in an instant out of circumstances which are totally unpredictable. It can also be a very lucky energy, especially if you dare to express yourself, to express your needs, if you dare to speak out with confidence, with Trust in yourself, trust in your goals, knowing that the accomplishment of your own goals is going to be something really positive for a lot of people, not just for you. So all of these things are emphasized. And of course, Capricorn is the sign where we plant our seeds of intention and it gives manifestation to them. So a trine with Uranus is a really, really good sign because whatever we have planted, whatever we have worked on, even if it's just intellectual work, even if it's just inner work or spiritual work, can out of nowhere suddenly instantly see daylight and manifestation. The sun trine Uranus is always a really good energy for very, very good inspired ideas to find practical solutions it is a very strong create inner creative energy. And since it is in earth element, well, that means that it's not just symbolic or hypothetical, but also very, very practical and down to earth. Even if it's not you who think about the practical solution, even if it's another person, it is still a big blessing because let's not forget Mercury holds the same conversation and that is communication, that is connections with other professionals, with people who can actually help you, people who fit the role perfectly. And the sun's connection with Uranus can make all of this work like a miracle. So for those who are seeking a significant upgrade in their careers, or for example, like a new job, a new career, starting new studies, or starting something totally new, but which does involve some kind of work, some kind of activity, it is a really, really good energy, because options, opportunities, solutions, new people, new connections can come out of nowhere, 
or if it's like a massive struggle that you're trying to overcome, well, this can mean help in an instant, in unexpected, surprising, shocking help even. Of course, there is some tension in the sky as well, which can be the part which is the total opposite to all of this, because it can mean a lot of conflict, it can mean social restlessness, it can mean the main theme of revolutions, people taking to the streets, people demanding their justice, their rights. Now all of this plays out at the same time as well, for Mars holds the very famous square with Pluto for the third and final time, and Mars is also very close to the planetoid Eris, in mythology his sister, the female revolutionary, the awakener, the protester basically. So this does signify that there is a totally different, not so favorable, not so pleasant and rather violent nuance to this energy as well. But the huge difference is that Saturn is no longer in its home sign of Capricorn, So basically that means that the power now truly belongs to the people. The last time Mars held this square with Pluto was Saturn was in its home sign of Capricorn, which means that it did favor centralized power. It did favor the rules and regulations and the sovereignty of the leaders. But now it's a totally different picture where it actually favors people, it favors human communities, society, the individual. So, you know, we have reached an expression of this energy where things have changed totally. The game is different. And what people demand, ultimately, people have to be given it. And also, another symbolism, well, until Saturn was in the sign of Capricorn, Yes, it did favor leaders, professionals, highly skilled individuals, those who dedicated themselves to leadership, to guiding us, to representing us. But it also put the responsibility on them. So yes, you are favored, but you also have to do the work quite perfectly, without any faults and mistakes, etc. So you had to demonstrate your powers, your skills, your expertise, and that you deserve to be there. And there was a time window of three years when the leaders and centralized power had to do this. So yes, it had the power, but also the responsibility. But now when Saturn moved on to the other side of the sky, as in its ancient ruling sign of of, uh, Aquarius, sorry, now it is time when they hold accountability for their actions, so people are going to demand that they answer for everything that they did. And now this can mean anything. If they did something really, really good, especially, for example, in some parts of the world, for example, New Zealand, where authorities did prevent the COVID to spread as dangerously as it did in other places in the world. So naturally, if you did something really, really good, wise, and it worked, that means a reward, because people are going to trust you that much more, and they will simply acknowledge that the fact that they trusted you was definitely the right choice. So that is a massive reward in itself, because it gives a harmonious feeling vibe to the whole country, to the whole interconnected systems that basically depend on one another. But if this was the opposite, if the leaders, the government, centralized power failed people, and you know, this is where people will decide. It doesn't matter what you think you did. It doesn't matter what standards you respected. This is where people will be, as people as in, the human communities, the citizens, for example, they will be the final judges, and if they're not satisfied, well, that is a different kind of karmic reward, where they will express their mistrust 
and their dissatisfaction. So this is why this third and final square between Mars and Pluto is going to have a totally different expression. Yes, the unrest, the frustration, the rage, and the violence is somewhat part of the deal, but the outcome may be totally different, where centralized power might just decide, well, enough is enough time to step down. This is an example which can happen in certain parts of the world. And finally, there's another celestial conversation of tension, which is not going to be exact yet next week, where Venus holds a square with Neptune. Now, Neptune is the higher octave of Venus, so both of these planets can be very, very dreamy. They can be very influential from an emotional perspective, where they're meeting, if it's one of of harmony, let's say, well, that can create a very um, dreamy, romantic, rose-tinted kind of state where we just project beauty and, you know, love and harmony onto anything that we see and do. But when they speak in tension, well, it can be the same thing, but taken into extremes. You know, every high has a low, So when you go up to the clouds and just stay on your little dreamy cloud, that is absolutely fine and wonderful, but know that the cloud will pop one day or at a given moment, and the fall is going to be that much greater. And if it's just a state, if it's just feelings, well, that that might not be such a big deal because all of us have ups and downs from time to time. But Venus has also much to do with aesthetics, beauty in a physical sense, cosmetics. So before you decide or get very, very inspired either by inner or outer forces to undergo a cosmetic transformation, well, be sure to think it through because Venus in Sagittarius can be quite extreme. It can go to the extremes. It can be quite extravagant and no no limit so before you do something radical cosmetically be sure to think it through and the same goes if you want to invest big money somewhere just because you have a strong feeling or you have a strong attraction to anything you want to invest money into be sure to apply a sense of logic because neptune speaking in this way to venus well This can mean illusion, delusion. It can also mean deception sometimes. So be sure that you think things through, especially when it comes to cosmetic changes and investing money, spending money, lending money, or getting a loan. Well, this concludes next week's horoscope. So I wish everyone a warm welcome into the new paradigm. And at the same time, here from One Million Nights, all of us wish you blessed and very, very happy winter celebrations. Yes, there are a lot of restrictions and a lot of rules that we have to respect, will it or not. But let's remember that winter celebrations, regardless of their form, their religious background, or who celebrates it, is still a spiritual celebration it is all about the light so we don't need a lot of material transactions or even physically meet another person to express our gratitude our feelings to share love and appreciation we can still be happy we can still celebrate and we can still tap into the symbolism of the winter solstice And even winter celebration from a religious perspective. Even if our lives are quite challenging, full of obstacles, limitations, and our sense of normality totally shattered right now, that cannot prevent us from actually embodying positive vibes, love, optimism, And being the light at the end of our own tunnels, being our own savior, being our own 
Messiah by practicing self-love and appreciation for everything that we have in our lives. So once again, thank you for listening. Wish everyone blessed winter celebration. And see you next week. Bye for now.